Earlier this year, I got the chance to go back to my second home, which is South Africa. And, and I've lost count as to how many times I've been there. I think this was six or seven. I don't know. But this time was a little bit different from all of the other times. For one, it was my first solo trip to South Africa. And two, I partnered with Visit South Africa to tap into Johannesburg's creative pulse and experience the city with a new lens. Part of that itinerary was exploring Joe Berg and meeting up with some of his amazing mavens of culture that influenced fashion, music, and art. And I did just that. And what we had was a really dope and interesting conversation that we labeled as an Indaba. And if you are not familiar with the Zulu language, Indaba is the word for a meeting of the mind. So we sat down and talked about why Joburg is unlike any other city in the world, and that's something that even Forbes magazine agrees with. What lies for the city's future, and you know a few things in between. But if you're not familiar with Johannesburg, also known as Joburg or Josie, it definitely needs to be on your list. There's a reason why I keep coming back to Johannesburg. A shout out to South African Tourism for sponsoring this episode of the podcast and giving me the chance to connect with some new friends. Check out our conversation. For joining another episode of Ingentrified. Of course, this is your boy Ken Johnson, and I am out of the country right now. I'm home, but I'm out of the country at the same time. <laughs> so Wait. we are recording live from one of my favorite spots in Joburg uh, at Curiosity Hostels. But before we dig into why I'm here, uh, one thing that I ask everybody that comes on the show is what's on their radar at the moment. So it could be your favorite book, your favorite jam, whatever rabbit hole you've fallen into on Netflix. Like, what's taking up your brain space right now? What's on your radar? Yeah. Welcome back, yo. Yeah. Um, there's a lot on my mind, huh? It's, <laughs> it's tricky to single one thing out. I don't know, man. I think land, travel, <laughs> purpose. Yeah, a whole lot, you know. Oh, these are real <laughs> nice <laughs> answers. <laughs> Easy. Um, what a tough one, man. But uh, for me, uh, lately I've been enjoying um, these uh, new artists that I stumbled on called Crack and Smack. Crack and Smack. Crack and Smack. Uh, they have this song called Stumble, actually. Stumble. Crack and Smack. Uh, such a dope, dope Are they based song. here? No, they're not based here. I haven't done much research on them. Just really good tunes. I've been playing it on repeat for like three days now. Yeah. Just one song. Um, With me, it's... Hey, I've been watching a lot of Chinese movies. You know those uh, karate movies that I used to watch as a kid? So I started with one and now I'm down to the oldest ones. You know a director called Akira? Yeah, yeah. Kirosuwa. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of his stuff, you know, it's very inspiring. So yeah, I've been on that vibe lately, like the old karate movies. How has that influenced stuff you've been working on now? A lot. Yeah. Because it's taught us because we are mostly known for visuals. So when we watch these things, like he infuses both visual and dialogue. And dialogue has always been something that we never concentrated a lot on. So now when you watch his movies, you get blown by the storyline. And then you... You see the action in the in the words, and then when the action does happen in the action, it's like you know, it's a blast. Yeah. Uh, what's on my radar right now? So, for me, since I'm back here, I'm all about everything music. So I'm constantly like shazamming everything that I'm hearing. Dope. Uh, partly because I want to go back and, and flaunt it in front of folks and be like, "Oh, you don't know this? <laughs> How do you not know this? This yeah. is the jam right now." <laughs> Uh, so that's that's my thing. I I am very deeply entrenched into discovering all of the new dope music that's going on because the stuff I've been listening to is old to y'all. Yeah. So I'm trying to play catch up right now. So that's what's been on my radar right now. Uh, as far as anything I'm watching, 
uh, there's nothing on Netflix, but you, you and I were talking about a whole bunch of different stuff yeah. that I need to play catch up on that yeah. you put me on. So uh, I've been focused on music more so than anything lately. And the project that we've been working on has yeah. been a big part of my brain space right now. And that's actually the perfect segue yeah. into where we're going next. But before we jump into the main discussion, I'm going to let you guys know who I'm actually talking to. You guys may hear random voices for the last couple of minutes. And this is the first time I've had three guests on the show. So you guys are special. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You weren't special before. I just <laughs> now you're special. <laughs> so uh, why don't you go ahead and tell the people who you are? Who am I talking to? Yeah, um, I'm Peggy Tube. And I'm from Curiosity Hostels. And yeah, so we offer accommodation in Joburg and cool experiences around the cities that we're in. Okay, Becky's being super humble right now. <laughs> Becky yeah, is yeah, the mayor humble. of Mabone. <laughs> <laughs> of Joe's actually. Yeah, uh, you can't walk no more than five feet with him and somebody shaking his hand and knows who he is. He's being incredibly humble. Yeah. Uh, actually, I realized how... Um, influential these two are today <laughs> more than me right. No, we had the same. <laughs> right they got billboards in the city like no. I nobody's think, I think it's matching outfits yeah. <laughs> that's all nothing yeah. else um, cool. I'm uh, Fatwani Innocent Mukeri uh, one part of I see a different you and um, we we are an agency production house uh, that is mainly focused on changing perceptions of what people think of Africa. Started in Soweto, and now we've grown to be beyond just Soweto. And yeah. I'm Vuyo. One half of I see a different you. Everything Innocent said is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys are also being humble. Like I mentioned, they we were riding down the freeway and just happened to see a billboard with them. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real nobodies I'm talking to right now. <laughs> but I'm so happy to have met you two. Becky and I are old friends. We cool. We've been cool. But you guys, we met yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. And immediately hit it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So now I have new brothers in the city. Definitely. But uh, we all came together because we're really all trying to do the same thing. Yes. Um, And in different ways. But ultimately trying to change the narrative, yeah. change the imagery, change the idea of, of what Joburg looks like outside of Joburg, what Soweto looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What the hostile industry looks like in reference to Becky and and what what's possible in in Joburg for for our age demographic and just for the future. Yeah. So I really wanted to bring you fellas together because I mean you guys are all masters in what you do. And Thank sometimes you. I like to call myself a master. When I'm not being humble, I will call myself a master in what you I are, do. You are one. Uh <laughs> But I wanted to have a meeting of the minds. I wanted to have an indaba of sorts where, you know, we chop it up and, and really break down the importance of, of Joe Berg. Uh, so let's start. Let's lay some foundation. Let's start a little bit uh, broad. Why do you do the work that you do? But Twani, I'll start with you. <laughs> cool, so much pressure. I think um, we, we love where we're from. You know, um, we have a passion for Soweto. We have a passion for Africa, for Johannesburg. And just uh, the whole black consciousness uh, thing. When we started, we didn't think it could be something we live off because it was just fun. And then we saw the gap that, okay, cool, we can position ourselves this way and make a living off it, you know, yeah. make a living off what we love. And... I mean, it's tough, but it's fun. We wake up every day, me and we fight, we, you know, and we fight for, like, fun things, you know, like, no, let's shoot this thing this way. Let's write ads this way, you know. And it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful challenge and being able to, to grow and employ other people to help the cause of what we want to be is the most amazing thing to, to see and do. You know, yeah. That's power. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite great to be, you know, we've been cultivating or hustling in the city for a long time. Yeah. But we've never really sat on such a platform. Such know? an amazing thing, yeah. Yeah. But um, I think it's born from storytelling, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as far as one could remember, our grandparents will narrate these stories. Mm -hmm. And 
I went on, started doing walking tours of the city. That was me, you know, I guess telling my story, changing perception, yes. you know, narrating our own African stories. Mm-hmm. And I think this now, it's an extended version of that. You know, as much as you, you create a foundation for both local and international travelers to be able to come in, but it's also really just telling urban African stories that a lot of people don't get to speak about, you know? Yeah, I, th- I think you guys make the city real to people because thank you there are and this is something i've learned just in bringing people here that they have this crazy idea of what south africa is what joburg is what soweto is and it's nowhere near the actual (laughs) reality for these places so the fact that you have put passion into really just telling the truth uh about your city is is something that you know people people take for granted, you know, and we're quick to complain about how people view our city, but very few people want to do the work to change that. Yeah. And and that's where you guys have come in. You felt compelled enough to to bring the importance and the value that, that people hadn't understood yet, but you knew it was there. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Black and Abroad. We really wanted people to understand that there were so many stories that weren't being told that were happening. And moments like this where, you know, connections are being made and exchanges of, of information and, and knowledge and and just the innate connections that we have um, that, that don't get to happen if we rely on things that have been told to us before. And, and we spoke about this earlier, uh, about how even here, you guys have had ideas on other countries in the continent. And that was really what sparked I See a Different You. So tell us about that trip that, that kind of jumped off the company. Um, so Innocent and business partner of ours left for Kenya. So when they went to Kenya for a job, when they got there, they sent us a picture. It was of this guy on a motorbike. It was so cool. I'm like, hi, why? Are you sure you guys are in Kenya? Why is there's bicycles in Kenya and scooters in Kenya and nice motorbikes there? And there's buildings at the back. And we're like, yeah, Kenya's nice, man. There's buildings and there's... And that's when we realized that what we thought of Kenya, because we thought Kenya was just a jungle, you know? It was just a civil war and all, like... It was just people killing each other, you know, and hungry children and poverty. But then when we saw that picture, we realized that we have been like showed so much negative of Africa that we think the whole continent looks like that, you know? And when they sent us that picture, we realized that this is probably how people think of South Africa as well. And then we started, I see a different, you're showing people a different South Africa, a different Africa. That was really your aha moment. Like, Mm -hmm. wait a minute, this is how people are looking at us. And and that's the same, that's the same kind of moment that, uh, Eric, my co-founder, and I had when we were like, this is how the world views us, even when we're in a space where we can travel the world. Mm. Um, my first time here in Joburg, I was out in uh, Huateng. I think we were in the cradle. And one of the workers there was like, it was a white gentleman, and he said, you know, this is the first time I've seen Black people enjoying themselves, like in a space of pleasure. And we were looking like, what? I, how is that? This is 2015, mind you, not that long ago. Um, he was just like, yeah, he was like, no, I'm glad to see you here, but I, I've just never seen that before. And it just put into perspective the things that even here need to change yes. internally. And those are things that we deal with at home. Um, and sometimes you don't even know that you're, you're dragging that along with you mm-hmm. until somebody points it out. What was the moment when you knew that this was exactly what you were supposed to be doing? Like, when did you know that I see a different you was it? Like, this is exactly where you're supposed to be right now. It was how people received it. You know, when we did it, we were not looking for any attention, actually. It was just saying, look at where we're from, you know, and how people responded to the photos we, we took of our story to, they saw themselves in those places that we were taking photos of, you know, like, that we had the style in it, uh, the grungy background, the places that are known as uh, dangerous. And people would be like, you know that place, that's Zola. I used to hang out there. And they, they give them like a pride thing that, wow, 
such a cool photo that's like trending online and I know where that is and how people kind of now also took took it to themselves to now tell their own stories and it became like a movement beyond just ourselves we're like this is it this this is what we actually want to do you know just inspire everyone to to tell their own stories tell their african experience and uh, not in a touristic way you know i mean it inspired us to also kind of when we travel we'd always want to see through the eyes of a local when we get to any place there mm -hmm. because the locals are the people who live there we want to just find out where the real people are like how we did our talk with you today in in uh we, it, the response of people just inspired us to continue as tough as it is as, as tough as it is <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah just how people also took it upon themselves to see a different everything you know to see the positive in anything yeah and when people started to to do what we did yeah that's when it was like i know this is it so it took the copycats to let you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but wood leggers <laughs> so think okay so we we work in very familiar spaces becky you can probably chime in on this too when people start copying you do you take that as a good thing or a bad thing it depends on the level of it you know, I mean, even now, there's a lot of things we see that, oh, that's actually what we, that was our idea, and someone took it. It doesn't really bother us. I, I think it just it reminds uh, or strokes a little bit of our ego and say, <laughs> oh, so we're doing the right thing. If people want to do what we're doing, it means we're on the right track. We're still kind of relevant. We, when they stop copying us, it means we're not relevant anymore. Somehow, I think that's how I kind of look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> there's a thin line, you know, I think between inspiration and just culture vultures. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well said. <laughs> and I guess like in the industry that I'm in, you know, Curiosity was really the first inner city hostel in Johannesburg and really pushing that boundary between design and experience led accommodation in the continent. And <clears throat> I guess it's great when you know you've got other youth who are black who are wanting to go into that industry and right. also really can learn from that. But then if it comes, I think from uh, a white privileged space, and they literally just biting off your your ideas, and there's a bit of discontent around that, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's disingenuine, and you can feel it when you walk into those spaces where they just went in and were like, "Okay, I like this, I like that, I like this. Let's take you know? that and try to make something." But it, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword because you look back and you're like, well, this is what I wanted. You know, this is why I started sure. the work that I did because I didn't see these things happening and now they're happening. You know, yeah, yeah. it looks like my stuff, but it's For happening. Sure. So yeah. you're like, am I happy? Because now more people is more eyes on the problem that yeah. I was looking to solve or am I upset because people didn't want to pay me to solve it again. Yeah, they sure. wanted to take it for themselves. But it's a very interesting question that because when I when I looked at like some of the the billboards they did recently with some brands, mm -hmm. I started seeing these other brands also kind of mimicking, yeah. you know, like <laughs> putting now people in the yeah. like, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, yeah, it's a thin line, huh? Yeah. It is a thin line. It it makes people angry that one. Yeah. It's very sad. Because you know. The thing that makes me angry is that if you are a pioneer of something, no? let's say you are the first person who started something. Mm -hmm. You know, when you started it, you never had money to start it in the first place. Right. When you do it and then it starts getting traction, is it not nice for someone to come to you and say, you know what, I see you've started this thing. Help us do 20 more because you know this thing. But now when they take the exact same thing, and go do it because they've got the money, obviously. Mm -hmm. And now you are stuck there with your idea. Now it's their idea because they are able to spread it further than you can because right. they've got the money. Right. And it, and it's less work for them because they already had a concept for it, <laughs> looking at what you did. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that I think is just the burden of being an innovator. Yeah. Like it's, it's something that you end up having to deal with. Yeah. Uh, now, Becky, we were talking about local experiences and and how that's really i think that's how we all travel mm. uh, yes and that's something you really tried to create 
with curiosity. Why a hostel? Why not a bed and breakfast? Why not a hotel? Why a hostel? Yeah. I think for me, it was the, the reason I went to hostels that it was quite a, an easy point of entry into the industry, you know? Mm -hmm. Low cost, high value, dealing with critical mass. Um, but also, it's very authentic when, uh, you know, a typical hotel, you know, it, it's about shared experiences. It's about, you know, people all meeting at a bar, meeting at the communal kitchen, you know, and getting to really understand spaces from a local, localized sense, you know? And yeah, you know, I think the model will always evolve, you know, it will grow from this to something else, but it will, the DNA will always have basically the, the communal aspect of a, of a hostel itself. Yeah, I think curiosity definitely operates as the heartbeat of Mabanang. Yeah. Like it emanates all of the things that this area stands for. For sure. What kind of impact do you think Mabanang has on on what you do here? Yeah. I th I, th I think one we're very fortunate to be in Mabonang, right? Um reason being it's, it's so accessible. You know, you step out the door, you've got restaurants, bars, theaters. It makes it easier, you know, for a traveler, both local and internationally, to really kind of connect, have that sense of connectedness. Mm -hmm. um, I think I forgot your question. <laughs> 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 can, can I touch on something that's really amazing about what Peggy, Peggy is doing here? Mm -hmm. Is it's it's like a, it's a place where you meet any, anything you can imagine in the world, like all types of people. Right, but it doesn't. It feels like it's it's it's. It feels like I'm in my hood, or I'm at home when I'm here. At the same time, there's different types of people are from around the world, so it's an amazing networking place. It, it it reminds me, not not reminds me. It inspired a lot of what we do. There's an event we do called Meet the Locals. This is yeah. a natural Meet the Locals thing where internationals and locals can be in one place. We'll play pool. We'll challenge each other. We'll have conversations like this, and and we don't even think about. Yeah, a guy says I'm from Argentina. Like, hey, geez, hectic. What do you guys do there? I'd have never been there. And then now there's dialogue of understanding or inspire me to say, okay, my next trip is gonna be to Argentina, and how not exclusive this person, this place is. You know, like exclusive in a way that not exclusive in a way that everyone is allowed to come in. They don't care if you're wearing sneakers, suits, whatever. Whatever you have in your pocket, what car you're driving, no one cares. We here, we all the same. You know, doesn't no classes, just good energies. And that there's one thing you, your backpacker has that none of them have. It has so much soul, like the yeah. energy that radiates around here. Yeah. I don't know how you do it, bro. Because yeah. every time there's new people around here, but the same energy. Yes. You know, same energy. Yes. And, and that's in, something that's hard to maintain, I would think. Yeah. yeah. I think I I mean you 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 can't manipulate authenticity, right? Yeah. And tying back to what you're asking about, oh, what if other people come in and bite on those ideas? Yeah. I don't care what big brand you are, you know, but I think authenticity you can't really replicate. Yeah, yeah like I would say there's always something missing when people try to replicate yeah. what you do. Yeah. And it like I said, it's, it's the soul of it. It's, there's heart. And if curiosity wasn't here, I don't know what what Mabo Nang would feel like. Because yeah. uh, it, mm. I, well, Becky knows this. Every time I step foot in this area, I walk up in here <laughs> and, and show my face, make sure I'm here. Because I, I want, A, I just want to be a part of the energy, but I want to normalize the idea for people who are, looking at what I'm doing back home, yeah. this is a place where you need to come. You, so. you know what happens? Somehow, you have self-appointed ambassadors. Yeah. You, he's never went and said, dude, you represent it. There's people, like, sometimes I come here, walk around, get bored quickly. I walk up here and chill by that the table there, yeah, yeah. have a beer, and have the best time. I might not be hanging out with anyone, just by myself and look at people. It's such a dope... Dope, dope vibe, yeah. yeah. I don't know how you did it, bro. Yeah. Don't lose it. It's nice. Yeah. You want <laughs> Voyo to hang here more. Yeah. <laughs> ah, guys, I'm always here. <laughs> we, we, we all know why it doesn't come yeah. too much here. I love this place. You've got you an know, addictive personality. <laughs> on what Innocent was saying, like the energy is too nice. You know, when we got in here, there was a guy playing the banjo there. Yeah. 
relaxed nicely and then he got up and he ate that plant he took a plant <laughs> and he ate it where have you seen that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I have not. I also yeah. have not until today. <laughs> and it's also there's loyalty from locals and, and yeah, for sure, it's such a dope thing. Yeah, you can go on for days about this place. Bro. I love yeah. it. Good times. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it was hard for the local people to open up to Mabaneng when it first became a thing? How was the transition for folks? Yeah, I think you know at core and at heart, Mabaneng is born from an artistic community mm-hmm. before even the idea of a neighborhood was born. It was how do you create one building into a creative hub? And then eventually with the influx number of people coming in, the initial developers started realizing that no man, people want to leave work play here. And that's how the idea of a connected neighborhood was really born. Mm-hmm. Um, like many other neighborhoods in the world, you know, I think artists are always the first critical activist. Yeah. So they come, they change, they shift. And the fact that they always are first critical activists, it brings in a very organic flair into the local communities and people feeling that they've got a sense of belonging in those spaces. And, and, and Maboneng has gone through circles. You know, I think in the beginning, it was very arty, then real estate dictated at some point, mm-hmm. then commercial spaces need to come. And that's a natural progression of any area. You know, you need to be able to, to cater for, for all vast offerings. Now, culinary is quite a huge thing here in the neighborhood. You know, okay. uh, we've got some of the best restaurants in the neighborhood and, and it'll grow. It'll always shift, change, grow, adapt to what Joburg is, transform Joburg. And, and yeah, we hope eventually the whole of Joburg becomes Maboneng. <laughs> Are you afraid if that happens that Maboneng will lose what made it what it is now? Because we, we talked about, you know, when things become copies and every time you copy something, it becomes a little bit less of the original. Yeah. How do we maintain the the soul and the warmth of this place but expand at the same yeah. time is there a way i think Joburg is a is a very interesting city and i think for a city that for such a long time has had such a negative reputation you need more developers you need more ideas like marble neng and what one hopes is that these little areas expand and collide right and create holistically a city that we want to all live work and play in right I don't think every space, you know, will always be like, like Maboneng is very, it's community led. And then you go to areas like Bramfontein, it's more young student vibes. You've got the fashion district, Newtown. And, and I think it's important to have a a variety. Yeah. You know, if there was a misconception about this part of town, what do you think it would be? (laughs) I think the idea of people thinking that you can't explore you know, uh, Johannesburg. I mean, till to date, it's sad. You know, you've got even locals who don't engage with the city, who haven't engaged with the city in 30 years. Oh, yeah. wow. You know? And you, look, you guys all agree. So this yeah, is... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what you end up having, you end up having literally an international clientele that knows the city better than the locals. Mm-hmm. So I think we need to be able, one, to transform the mind of the locals. Because once they're able to explore their own backyards, are we then able to influence a larger audience? You know, I mean, I'm sure if you were to step out today, they'll be like, hey, you're going to the city? Don't go into the, you know? So we're trying to change that. And I think that misconception of, you know, not one people thinking that you can't explore is, is a very faulty um, idea. And it's, it's crazy because it resonates in everything that you guys do. Yep. Um, for I see a different you, like Soweto is very much at the core of that. Yeah. How do you find Soweto represented in the work that you do, even outside of of Soweto? Soweto to us is um, it's our way of living, you know. It's how we greet. It's how we always appreciate and how we always say thank you when someone gives us an a, a compliment. So with us, Soweto is in everything we do. You know? The works that come out from us being Sowetans is just a bonus, but Soweto is just us. It, it's a it's a way of living, you know, like even when we now we in like boardrooms where you pitching for business and everything, the Soweto in us helps us uh, be uh, different from anyone that will be pitching for what we are pitching for. It gives us like a voice where we know something you don't know, you know, like the the way we carry ourselves or the way we would like to dress, mix it up with what's um, international or whatever that's trending. Or it, it, 
it's, yeah, it's, it's such a, it's exactly what Bruyo said. It's, 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 a, it's a way of living. It's not a place itself. It's, it's the way we live. That's Soweto. What is it about Soweto that makes it unlike any other place in the world? Asking you that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still I'm still answering that question for myself. It changes because every time um, I come, I have a different experience. Yeah. You know, um, even when I'm doing the same thing, yeah. I have a different experience, and I've gotten those experiences on my own. I've gotten to take people and have them experience it and get their reaction and and, and kind of parse that and understand what that means. Yeah, and, I mean, I know that I've only had like a corner of Soweto. There's so much I haven't seen uh, there. That's why y'all taking me out tonight. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I that answer changes for me. I, I can't answer that because I'm not done. So that's a work in progress on that. But a place that's unlike any other place in the world is here, is Mount Bonang. It just got voted one of the 12 Best most, roads. yeah, the by Forbes, there. right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the area has been, it started in 2009, and I think for something of this nature to really grow in the last decade so rapidly, you know, I think no neighbor would really in the world has been able to experience such mm. urban regeneration um, in, in such a fast pace. And for us, it talks to a lot about what the new way of thinking. People are no more just interested in your safaris. Mm. You know, it, it's about the human connection. People want to come and understand real stories. I think Mabo Neng articulates that, and it's made it it's made it's created a foundation for for people to be able to really explore and experience urban African stories at heart. You know, do you see Mabo Neng as kind of like the the future of Joburg? I think Mabo, yeah, for sure. You know, I think. One, it's got potential to really demonstrate how other African cities can become. This idea mm -hmm. of creating integrated ecosystems where poor, middle, and upper income earners can all coexist. And as I said earlier, you know, we hope one day, it, we, we like to think of Maboneng as a philosophy, an a barricaded space. You know, I'll be six city blocks in town doing a tour. They'll be like, ah, Maboneng. So we hope eventually the whole of Jobek becomes Maboneng. So before we close out, our meeting of the minds. If you were talking to a person who was planning to come here, and we'll start with Soweto, mm. what would be the thing they absolutely have to do that isn't a touristy thing? Must learn how to greet people in Zulu. Because yeah. Yeah. if you are able to greet a person in a language that is local, you know, you just get straight into their hearts and they'll show you everything. And it's respect. And it's respect. Yeah. Yes. It's like I, I want to, I want to be in your space, but I want to be appreciative yeah. of what it takes to be in your space. Um, and I think a lot of people miss that that point of travel. Yes, um, is not only coming to enjoy, but leaving your mark as well in a positive way. Yeah. So okay, so give us a quick lesson. Give us the proper hello. I'll give you the famous one. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, hold on. A accent on the O. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hello. <laughs> Once you say that, you're fine. Yeah. Do you think that the weddings are different than any other area in Joburg? Do you think there's a special thing about the people from Soweto? I think Soweto has a pride thing. You know, mm -hmm. like there's a so where to you should know who I am. <laughs> you know, like the, there's an American dream thing that happens in America. Mm -hmm. So it turns out do have that pride thing. Somehow, I don't know who would put this on us, but somehow when you say you're from Soweto, it comes with like, you feel like there's like five lines behind you <laughs> saying, yeah, 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 you're from Soweto, you know. Yeah. comes with a lot of my ancestors and like that pride to say Mandela also was living there all the living legends, all the guys who struggled, you know, heritage. Yeah. It, it comes like a street, street, uh, what do you call it? Street cred, in a mm. way, when you say from Soweto, immediately they're like, oh, okay, cool, this guy knows his whereabouts, he knows what he's doing. It is a pride thing. Yeah, Everyone has that. I mean, every hood has it, but 
no, there's a thing with Soweto between, like, it is a, it's a thin line between arrogance and just, like, confidence. Right? Confidence, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it has that pride thing. Yeah. Becky, same question to you. If there was one thing you would want someone to know about Mabinang before they got here, what would that be? <laughs> I think you had a better answer than me that <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. Let me see if I can try to answer that. Uh I feel like that's something that changes for me too. Like every time I come here I, I do something different. Definitely expect to not come just once. I don't think you can. That's I don't think you can off. hang out and be like, Oh, I'm never coming back here again. I don't think it's allowed. <laughs> yeah. Uh and I don't think it's possible. I think you you immediately become drawn to the space. And like we talked about this earlier, like it feels familiar, but it also feels like a different space. Yep. Like it, there's an immediate warmth, but you know that you're going to be exposed to something new. You know you're going to see something dope. Something creative is going to be yeah. in your experience there. You know that you're going to expand whatever your thought is about sure. the city uh, when you come here. I'd, I'd say... If you're visiting South Africa and you're not staying at the Backpacker Curiosity, you should just come hang out. Yeah. Try it out. Yeah. That's yeah. one place where I think you'll interact with people more than just uh, walking around and like seeing beautiful people. When you at the Backpackers, you literally interact. There's game, game nights. I used to come to game nights. I love it. <laughs> we will have fun, you know. So for everyone who comes to SA, try and come to the Backpackers. And the drinks are on point at the bar. The drinks are on point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's affordable. It's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How you no, it's a, it's a, it's a funny thing. This because well, interesting, because you know when when we started Curiosity, we'd get these travelers coming in, and they're like, "Yeah, I check these guys online. I want to check them out." And it happens now. Actually, one of the travelers who's here <laughs> came in like I think three years ago, <laughs> and they're like, "Yo, I saw these guys online. I see a different you." We want to check them out like, ah, oh, they are friends. We know them. <laughs> <laughs> They're friends of the brand. We know them. Yeah. In boardrooms, like, presenting adverts and stuff. Mm. We're like, Peggy, who's our boy? Don't worry. We've got him. That's a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, now we connected. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, agreed. And, and look, and then I came in and did the same. I, yeah. Mm. The first time I met back, I was like, oh, no, you know we're going to be cool now. Yeah. Oh, you know <laughs> Black and the Broad is going to be all up and through curiosity. And even if, because we still have an issue with trying to convince Black people that hostels are things that they should be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think this is a great space for them to expand that idea. For sure. Uh, a, because when we tell them, oh, no, curiosity is a, a black owned hustle. <laughs> like, yeah, no, the guys yeah, yeah. that run that are black. They're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Those things are allowed to coexist. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is a, a great space for people to open up their ideas to what Thank a hustle stay yep. uh, would feel like. And even if you can't stay, because they do be booked. Yeah. <laughs> even if you can't stay come in and definitely have a drink I'm, definitely. I'm telling y'all the drinks Go are ahead. on point All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, before we head out tell the people where they can find out what you got going on next oh. uh, we've got a brilliant website uh, Uh Instagram that's where we're more kind of very active at I see a different you our Twitter at I see a different you as well, and then Facebook. Yeah. So what's what's the next project you're working on? Can you tell us what you're working on next? I, I'll just say we're working with uh, some guys from London on a very cool project. Uh, me and Buyo are having sleepless nights on that. Stressful, stressful, but it's gonna be one one of a kind. Yeah. 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 So, and Becky, where can they find out more about Curiosity? Cool. So yeah, our website is curiosity.africa and on Instagram, Curiosity Africa, Twitter, Curiosity Africa. And that's curiosity, not with an S, curiosity <laughs> with the C at the end. Yeah. So like Curia and City as yes. in a place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Conceptual. <laughs> <laughs> and you definitely want to book here. If not here in Mabonane, they also have locations in Durban. Durban. And then we rolling out Cape Town next year. Cape Town yeah. is coming soon. So nice. uh, because if you're coming here, if you're coming to SA for the first time, you definitely need to do more than just Joe Berg. 
Yeah. Um, this is the first time. After that, you don't have to do anything else. You can just come to Joe Berg <laughs> and get your fix. But in Joe Berg first. Yeah, yeah. In Joe Berg first. And yeah. and not as a pastor. Yeah. Um, that's a, the work that we've done at Black and Abroad is to show that Joe Berg is more than just a connecting yep. city. Yep. Um, because everybody wants to go to Cape Town. But that's that's a good. I think two days there, three is enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the bulk of your time should definitely be spent. Yeah, here in Joburg. I love your passion for for Joburg and everything around us. Yeah. It's it's amazing, bro. Yo, the, so love the it. first time I came to South Africa it was August 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, the first like experience I had was in Soweto. My homeboy linked us up with his friends. He was like, "Yo, my boy Kent is this part of Erica in town. I want you to show them around." So it just happened. That it was a house party going on Dope. in Orlando. Dope. So we caught the uh, the taxi from like downtown into Orlando. So I know how to yeah, yeah, make my way down there and nice. and chill there for like the whole night. So I think having that experience before I did like anything touristy changed my whole perception, um, and I immediately fell in love. And from there, I think that really set the intention on how I learned about the rest of the city. Oh, wow. Through that, so a house party in Soweto was what kickstarted my love for this city, um, and you guys haven't failed me since. I, I, look, I, I'm I'm here twice a year now, uh, and I'm bringing folks uh, every so other time I come. You're yeah. so <laughs> Nice, no, it, it's in you. So do I get a South African passport now? <laughs> <laughs> I need that. No, there's, there's things going on back home. Sometimes I need to be out. <laughs> I'll get you Just a white case. <laughs> Fellas, thank you so much for, for chatting it up with me. How dope is this? Uh, that I got to come home and, and chill with my people and and really talk about how dope this city is. If I could bring everybody, I would. I'm trying. Um, and I know that when I get here, they're in good hands. So thank you. I appreciate you guys. Of course, I'm going to do my normal. You guys can always find me, uh, your host, Kent Johnson, on Instagram and Twitter at Kent W. Johnson. You can also find the podcast on those same places at Ungentrified Pod. This episode and all of the other episodes are on the website, ungentrifiedpodcast.com. And if you're feeling nice, give your boy uh, five stars on Apple Podcasts. If you're feeling super nice, add some words to it uh, and write out a review. You can also tell a friend, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and you should have subscribed already. Uh, but these are all things that help me out immensely. Fellas, again, thank you so much for 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 chatting, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank, uh, you. Uh, thank you. I, I couldn't have asked for for a better redo. Oh, look, before I leave. <laughs> so in January of this year, when I was here uh in Joburg, I hit up Becky and was like, Hey Becky, I'm working on a podcast and I want to interview you. You're gonna be the first Ooh. Yes, on my show. So we sat in the same spot Beautiful. that we're at now, and we recorded, and it was a good interview. I got home, and the audio was terrible. You, Yo. and I was so upset. <laughs> and uh, for it, this to be a full circle moment for me to be able to come back and, and do it right this time, yeah. and really dig into why we both love the city for our, you know, our own personal reasons. It's. I couldn't have asked for a better uh, return to the city. And I hit him up a week ago. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm about to come interview you next week <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and do it all again. So I'm, I'm like, that's a that's one of my favorite moments uh, of oh. 2018 is being able to come back and, right. and do it right. Yeah. Uh, we had the idea, just the execution jacked yeah. us up, but yeah. we got it now. Maximum respect. Yeah. Nice. Well, <laughs> give thanks, man. And of course, you guys, I'll check you guys next time on the next episode. Peace. Peace.